Hello and welcome to today's Ninja Trader Ecosystem webinar event with Anthony Draker of Verbal Journal. My name is Tiffany and I am a platform representative at Ninja Trader. I would like to mention that it is important to understand that there is substantial risk in trading commodity future contracts in Forex. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and will depend on your specific circumstances and financial resources. It is possible to lose all funds deposited with your broker and even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at the link provided for more information or for a copy of the CFTC full risk disclosure. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not a solicitation nor recommendation, but simply educational in nature. This webinar is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the NinjaTrader brokerage. With new tools added nearly every day, NinjaTrader ecosystem is home to hundreds of, hundreds of apps and services. You can quickly and easily find the tools and services you're looking for with a simple keyword search. You'll also find information about upcoming webinars in an on-demand video archive to view event recordings at the link provided. For up-to-date information, be sure to like or follow NinjaTrader ecosystem on all social media platforms. NinjaTrader is always free for advanced charting, strategy, backtesting, and trade simulation. And if you're just getting started with NinjaTrader, we offer free live training on a daily basis. You are very, well, again, we are very excited for this unique event in which Anthony will demonstrate the why behind reading order flow. Thanks again for your attendance today. And without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to the NinjaTrader webinar room, Anthony. Please take it away, Anthony. Tiffany, thank you very much. I always start off my webinars with a story about my family. This is a picture of them. There's me in the upper left, my father in the lower right, some of my uh, much older brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest of eight, but he always told us growing up, if you know how, you'll have a job. If you know why, you'll be the boss. And if you've seen any of my other webinars, you probably have seen this slide. And knowing the why in anything is important. So what's the why in trading? The why in trading is finding order flow moments. I know order flow is like a popular buzz phrase in trading, but how to read order flow in the real time, because that's going to create an edge for you. And how many people would agree? Everybody has opinions. Everybody could use the past to predict the future, but the present is the most elusive and a lot of common pain points. So the um, engagement with the real time. When I, when I started trading on the floor, that was not only my weakness, but I thought I was something was wrong mentally. And I buy all these books on fear. It wasn't fear. It was just there was too much randomness in the real time. And then um, the whole notion of trading what you see instead of what you think. Your thinking should be done when you uh, are ready to put something on or take something off. And then there's a promo at the end that we'll get into. So couple bullet points of understanding why. Number one, if you don't know why price moves, then you have no business predicting it. Real quick on NBO, what is it? What does it stand for and how we kind of take it to find uh, interesting moments? And then um, how if you could discover probabilities of where stop orders are, to show OPP, and that stands for other people's positions. And that's the way I want people to leave this webinar today. You stop worrying about what you think and start worrying about what other people are doing and thinking. So a little bit about me, if you don't know. In fact, let me ask, has anybody ever seen any of the previous webinars I've done on YouTube or anywhere else with Ninja? Put a yes if you have and no if you haven't. I'm always interested in how many people have seen me for the first time. A little mix of both. Great. So if you don't know anything about me, I started in 91 as a junior in high school. And I said, this is what I got to do for a living. This is back in 1991 when everything was on the floor. There was no electronic trading or computerized trading. Then I uh, went off to school, got back in 96, became a CME clerk. But I didn't go down there to be a clerk. It's a very thankless job. If you're not familiar with the floor, um, it's, uh, you know what rolls downhill and you're at the bottom of the hill. That was what I, what I was told on my first day. But that aside, I became a Board of Trade member, which means you're able to trade those products or certain products at the Board of Trade. Now everything is CME Group, right? CME bought the Board of Trade. 
but I couldn't make any money. It was 1999. I was ready to quit. I was so random in the pit. And I heard about this prop firm, International Trading Group. I didn't even know what a prop firm was. And here I was in the business. Got hired in April of 2000. And I was off to the races. Now, if you don't know what a prop firm is, a lot of people think it's this or that. A real prop firm is you don't really pay to get hired. They back you. You don't invest your, your own capital. It's usually a three-year contract and it's 50-50 split. And I only say that because a lot of people don't know what a true prop firm is. And it's essentially the venue of professional traders, especially professional day traders. So if you, you want to play football, you know you go to an NFL stadium and that's where professionals play or baseball. Today's opening day in baseball. You know where professional baseball players play, right? What they look like, dress like, what might be the uh, the 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 um, kind of industry speak in the dugout or the locker room. So prop firm is. So that a little bit of my path without getting too deep into that. So let me get you through this slide here and just stay with me on this because it's going to be interesting. A lot of people get this notion when they trade that what are you trading against? Some entity was the exchanges look at your trades and then either give you money or debit, credit your account, trading with your broker. A lot of people, most people don't understand completely the other side, all right? What if you could get a little bit more insight not of what you want to do. You should know what you want to do, but what the person on the other side wants to do. How do you get there? So in this example, there are two groups of sellers, A and B, all right? Husband and wife and kind of a relaxed, maybe real estate investor, both selling similar houses, same neighborhood, same price. And then there's a buyer trying to determine which house he might want to buy. Same house, same neighborhood. Who does he want to negotiate with as a buyer? Well, he wants a lower price, right? He wants a price that's a little bit lower than what it's listed. If anybody bought a house, you usually buy it less than what it's listed for. Who would he be better off negotiating with? In other words, what does he know about the seller or their position, OPP, other people's positions, that would give him a better probability of getting a lower price? Well, let's say under A, this couple is getting a divorce. Now, what do they have to do? They have to sell it, right? They don't want to sell it. Well, maybe I'll sell it if I get a good price or I could sit on it, be real, uh, patient. They have to sell it. Big difference. When you're long in a position, so think about this for your own personal trading. When you're long in a position and it's against you, you're anxious, you're uh, maybe not as objective, maybe it's getting close to your sell stop. How many people use sell stops to get out of long positions? Most. There's nothing wrong if, if you don't. I think pe most people should to manage your risk. But everybody understands a sell stop is used to get out of a losing long position, right? Well, this position's a loser because they have to sell it. They're getting divorced. They hate each other. So this guy would be better off trying to negotiate price with A than B, just based on that notion. That information gave him a much better um a much better decision a much better objective decision for him to make for what he wants to do so the point is who are you who, who's on the other side of the table so to speak and how much more could you learn from them as as to their emotions all right and most people don't get into that when they're into trading, I started going down rabbit holes like most, most people do on the floor. I was at the CME floor as a uh, clerk. All right. And I took classes sponsored by the CME and they were like a hundred, two hundred dollars each. And, and they tried to put good classes together. But the two classes I took and it wasn't the CME, but it was the guy teaching it. He was a member. Total waste of time. Maybe not his fault, but not at all what I thought it was going to be about. And I was on the floor in the exchange. So there's more rabbit holes that you can go down. Just try to keep it simple. Who's on the other side? So staying on this slide for a second. When you put on a trade and maybe you want to get long, think of it as you're betting the market's going to go up. You think it's going to go up. 
you don't think it's going to go down a lot and then up or you wouldn't buy it at 10 if you think it's going to go down to two first all the time, right? You'd wait. But you're putting on some sort of bet or opinion that the price of what you're buying is going to go up. Well, someone on the other side might not necessarily be getting short, but they think it's a good price to sell. Total opposite. I always tell people, if you're listening to someone and he's bullish and you're bearish, he thinks the market's going up and you think it's going down. If that distracts you, then you're not in the right business or you're not comfortable or confident with your opinion. Because I got news for you. Every time you're bullish, there are people bearish. And every time you're bearish, there are people bullish. So you want to be confident and use objectivity to kind of confirm your uh, decision-making. Now let's go on to this next slide. This is a, I got to take a drink of water because I lost my voice. Yelling at my kids. I, um, this is just a dome, typical dome from Ninja Trader. Most domes look alike. And I just put it up to give you guys a sense of this quote after you buy it, you're a seller. I said this like five or six years ago, and most people who heard it for the first time, like, yeah, that really resonated with me. I never thought of it that way. After I buy something, I got to sell it. That divorce couple had to sell it. But they didn't think about it. Usually you buy a house, you have to sell it right away. But what if you did? You know, when you get long, at some point you have to sell it. So after you buy it, you're a seller. So think about that for a second. And why does price go up rapidly? Anytime it goes up rapidly. You must have more desperate buyers. Let me back this up one second. Desperate buyers come two ways. They come from people who want to buy it to open a long or have to buy it to cover a short. They want to buy it to open a long. They have to buy it to cover a short. How many people in here have gotten stuck? Maybe it's something that happens often. Maybe it happens once in a while. It happens to me, especially if I'm not trading well. You're chasing. How many people agree with that? You feel like you're chasing. You want to buy it at 90 if you trade the S&P, and it's 92, 94, 96, and now you're still not long. You want to buy this damn thing at 90, it's not trading 96s, and you're still not long. You buy 97s, it goes back to 92. And you're like, this is great. And you're chasing. You're trying to get long, and you're chasing. I think that's common. There's nothing wrong if that's where you get stuck. If you, if you get stuck doing that a lot, there's nothing wrong with that. Do you want to fix it? Or... How about the emotions of when you have to buy it to cover a short, right? If you're short, you're trying to cover, chasing again, chasing it all the way up. So I want you to understand two ways of buying. Just for example, say we're going to stay on the buy side. That desperation leads to that chase. You're desperate to get long, but you're even more desperate if you have to cover a short because that's something you have to do. So when you put in your buy orders and just follow this up, when you put in buy orders and it walks, the market, you're not getting filled. Let me tell you this epiphany I had. I didn't plan on telling you this, but this epiphany I had about a month into trading in a prop firm. Now, I had been on the floor at the CME for a few years, never had this epiphany, and yet I had it about a month into a prop firm. Let me, let me pull up my pen here. What color do we want to use? Let's use blue for uh, spring. All right. So here's the epiphany I had. I literally looked at a chart that was going up. Price was going up. And I thought to myself, what the hell makes me so special that I'm going to get short up here and people are going to sell it after me at a worse price. They're going to sell it after me at a lower price so that the price goes down and Anthony could buy it lower. What makes me so special that I'm going to get short up here and people are going to come in after me and sell it at a lower price so that I could buy it back down in here? What makes me so special? I'm going to walk you through that in this example on this dome on this slide because I had the I, I thought through the answer and that's where the light bulb went off. All right, let's clear that a second. When you or others are chasing price, it goes up for one reason, because there are more people that want to buy it but they can't get filled. It's not just more buyers. It's more buyers who can't get the price that they want. All right. And it's like buying a house the other way from that other slide. It's three people want to buy a house. Only one gets filled, but the other two are instrumental in the price. In the way that price went up. Right. 
So if you look at these buy, these words, buy, 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 as orders, all right? They're orders. Let me back it up. They're orders that come in and they might, they make price go up. Trying to buy it can't get filled. And then finally, when you get filled, like that example I gave you, you wanted to buy it down here at 07 half, you finally get it here at 11, 11 half. And you're like, great. You chased it. You got long. A couple things happen when you got long, and you've seen it happen on this chart. When you got long, when others get long, did you see the sell order in the upper right going? Who puts in a sell limit order after you get long? Most of us. Maybe you even have it done with the automation that Ninja has. Right? So when you get long, let me back it up, a sell limit order goes in above the market because you obviously think price is going to go up or you wouldn't get long. Another thing goes in. Most likely a sell stop. Look in the bottom of the chart. Stop sign. So a sell limit order goes in for a winner, but a sell stop goes in in case you're wrong for your loser. A lot of people will connect these two orders, right? With an OCO order cancel order, which means if this one gets filled, this one gets pulled. If this one gets filled, this one gets canceled. So generally they're connected automatically or manually, but when you get long, you're selling above or you got to sell stop below. When someone else gets long, look what happened. Another sell order up there. Another sell stop below. Someone else gets long. Another sell limit up here. Another sell stop below. So you go through this progression, long, seller, seller. Did you see some of these buy limit orders kind of disappear? Because that also is something that happens as well. If you were, if you were chasing it and you left limits in here, you pull those because you already bought it up here. So sometimes after someone gets long, they pull a buy limit order above, or I'm sorry, a buy limit order below that they originally wanted to get long at. So you'll see some, some of their buy orders disappear. When I go through this, let me back it up. When you see long, sell limit, sell stop, and a buy order goes away. Now, here's the other side of this. We just wa I just walked you through buyers wanting to open a long right in here, chasing it up. Because you we're in this moment where more buyers and sellers that can't get filled, price goes up. These longs get open, the whole dynamic of sell orders above and sell stops below, right? You with me so far? Who else is nervous and even more nervous, anxious, angry, and everything else? This segment, the buyers that have to buy it to cover their short. How many people chase to get out of a loser? And it goes from a small loser to a big loser because you can't get filled. And then as soon as you get filled, it goes straight back down to where you probably got short. It happens. If it happens a lot to you, you're having trouble getting and staying successful, but it happens. I, the point is everybody knows what that feels like, right? You're short, maybe down in here, you had a chance to scratch it or break even, tried to buy it, missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it. Finally, it goes, you get stopped out and maybe price goes right back down. And you're like, damn it, as soon as I get stopped out, it goes right back down. Now, Let's just walk through as soon as and if buy stops. Now, remember, these are buy stops. Why are they buy stops? Well, what do you put in when you're short? You put in a buy stop, don't you? For a loser? Let's all agree that most buy stops are used by people who are short to cover that short for a loser. I know you could use a buy stop to get in long, but we're talking about how most people use that order type. You with me? So this is a buy stop. Let's say a bunch of buy stops get elected in this area, okay? What happened to the buy orders below? Soon as the stops got elected, the buy limits got canceled. Happens to your automation, right? So you could relate to it. If you're short, your buy stop gets elected, your buy limit below gets canceled, sometimes automatically. Make sense so far? Why am I making these buy limit orders, these green words that say buy, disappear? 
Why am I making these sell orders appear? Because that's how and what is happening to the market, and it's what makes it move. As soon as you indeed stopped a lot of shorts out for losers, they're no longer trying to buy it in here or below. If you don't remember anything from this webinar, remember this. The less people that are short, all right, that equals the less people trying to buy below. Attach it to your own trading. When you get stopped out of a short, you're no longer short. Less shorts, less buyers below. What happens when there's less buyers below in anything? It just has a better and a higher probability to go down. In fact, you need less buyers below for the price of anything to go down. This is why price moves. You had people that wanted to get long chase it. And they finally get long and they put their cells up there and their cell stops down there. And then you had people who are short that get stopped out. They got shook out. Another word that we use come from the floor is puke. Remember that word. When you puke a trade, it means you probably got out of it for a loser. It's a word synonymous from the trading floor. Puking is short means you got stopped out. Price rallied. You get stopped out. Maybe you have people get long in that chase. And now you created the turn potentially to head back down. Remember the epiphany story I just told you a few minutes ago? The epiphany of what makes me so special, what would make me so special? Price is going to go up. I can get short here and fade it and it's going to go lower and I could buy it at a lower price. In this case, making a profitable, profitable short trade profitable. What makes me so special? What makes you so special when you pick a top? Sell it. People are going to come in after you to sell it lower. This dynamic. Where you get that moment. People are trying to chase it. They finally get long. They put their sell orders in. People who are short get stopped out. They're no longer buyers in here and here and here. And all of a sudden, it becomes easier to do this. Go lower. If there's a lot of people open up a long and a lot of people get stopped out of a short and you have less buyers in here and more sellers up in here, then that's the dynamic that makes price go back down. That's what makes you so special. Your ability to read order flow in a way by concentrating on other people's positions. Everything ties back into that. If you're not understanding other people, then you're not. That's what a chart is trying to show you. You don't have to analyze all these numbers on a screen. You get a headache. But you got to understand it from who's on the other side. If you're looking to get short, what dynamic do you want to see play out? It's not the orders. It's the intent of the order. If the intent of a buy stop is to shake out a short, And you get shorts that puke, all right? And now there's less shorts. There is less buyers, like I said before. Don't um, criticize my penmanship. But less shorts, less buyers. Less buyers, it's easier for price to go lower. And then what does it do? It elects the sell stops and shakes out all these longs. The price's job is to find the stops. That's the whole price discovery process. Too many longs can't go up. Why? Too many longs, too many sellers. Too many shorts, hard to go down. Why? Too many shorts, too many buyers. In trying to, to, in trying to understand somebody else, understand yourself on how you feel and what you do when you put on a trade. And then put yourself in a position to find the areas on a chart 
that that emotion and this dynamic plays out because that's what's going to make you so special to be able to sell it and find the top or close to the top or fade it if that's a strategy of yours. And everybody, most everybody in here, I would imagine trades futures, getting long and getting short are both sides that you should take advantage of playing. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking most people understand getting short. A lot of people who've traded stocks sometimes don't understand what getting short is, but I would imagine most of you guys and girls do. So let me just look. Time. We've got plenty of time. The longs that chase it, they put in their sell orders. Shorts that get stopped out, they're canceling their buy orders. More sellers, MS, and less buyers. That's, that's the uh, answers to the test. That's what you need for price to go down in anything. I don't care if it's a plane ticket, a car, a house or the S&P 500. What markets do you guys trade mostly? ES, NASDAQ, oil, individual stocks. Pop it in there before I go to the next slide. And again, I'll go back to ask or ask, answer your question. So if you pop one in, I'm not ignoring it. I will answer it. And just to run through your guys' uh, answer here, most of it's ES, some DAX, Micro, corn trader, NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, oil, gold, Russell, NASDAQ, ES, Nat Gas. You know, what's interesting about the DAX, when I started my career in April of 2000, all we traded was Eurex. The DAX is a German stock index. The DAX and the Euro stocks, they were the two flagship markets in Eurex, still are. Boom, bobble, shots, DAX, and Euro stocks. And I say that because on one of my websites, it shows me trading the uh, Euro stocks and how different a market it was um, liquidity wise back in 2001 so every time I, I i see dax i think of it was one of the first two markets i traded and back and back at listen back in april of 2000 i gotta tell you the u.s markets were still mostly on the floor there was no electronic trading in the u.s really until like 0203 so in my first two years trading just urex we started at six seven o'clock in the morning central time at 10 30 central time a.m the european business day was essentially over their stock like the dax their cash markets were closed at 10 30 central if you were still in the office at 11 30 the risk manager back office guy what the hell are you still doing here and it was amazing because i went from almost quitting the business to then getting this job Starting at six or seven, done at 10 30, 11, home by noon. I still lived at home. My dad would say, What the hell are you guys doing over there? But that was, uh, we traded the uh, second half of the European business day. So, anyhow, the um, I think of that when I seen DAX in there. So, that's great. DAX was 25 bucks a tick. Now they trade them in half ticks. Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. You guys got questions? Pop them in there. Do you understand? I'll go back to this slide if you guys want me to. I, I try to make what's basic to me basic to you. When I got into educate, educating, helping other people, I, I assumed that people knew more than, um, than they did. And it wasn't their fault. It's not your fault if you don't know this because you don't know what you don't know. And it's troubling that there's a lot of rabbit holes out there. I went down them in, in the late 90s. It was because I got hired at a prop firm that I knew everything I learned there was going to be the right stuff. Okay. So the, the whole notion of buy this book, buy that book, buy any books, the whole notion of trading psychology, trading psychology is helpful. If you know what you're doing, trading psychology is going to make you a good trader. It can make you a better trader, but it, if you don't know what you're doing, trading psychology is useless. Do you want your doctor when you're flatlining on the operating table to do breathing exercises, yoga, and get calm? Or do you want him to know what he's doing? You want him to default to the training he has. You want to be objective. You want price to make your opinion, qualify your opinion, not all your emotions. Because you'll always find a reason to stay in that long trade, to get short, 
to add to that short. You'll always find reasons to justify your position or your opinion. You need to look at some simple things of other people. Find the divorce couple in the market and on the chart. I'm going to tie this in with a product that I have that it's been around a couple of years, Verbal Journal. And I think that's on the next slide and we'll talk about it. Verbal Journal. When you get yourself in a position to get better at the weakness of everyone, when I'm trading poorly, it's because I'm not reading the real time well. If you've never traded consistent, it's because you never learn to read the real time. You never read other people's intent with the orders that they put in. And so this verbal journal, one way to use it is to document things you see at certain levels so that you put yourself in a position to see it in real time. You, and I'll show you how to use it in a second, but you put in a title, a seen shorts puke per Anthony's webinar, seen longs puke per Anthony's webinar. You'll know what that means now. Do you want to be long when everybody's long? Hell no. Why? Because when a lot of people are long, a lot of people are trying to sell to get out of that long. Does that make sense? So you don't want a lot of people long. Most people would say, yeah, more longs, more longs. You don't want long positions opened with you when you're long because then you're all trying to sell it. You want those guys shook out. You want longs to puke, then you get in. So on a chart, you put yourself in a position to be able to document order flow, document moments that you could, could explain and record, go back and listen to the moments on the chart you're supposed to look and identify in real time so you don't miss it the next time or the third time or the fourth time. So this particular software, it's really easy to use. When you click on the chart, this dialog box comes up. You put in a title. And the title might be uh, Long's Puke. You can't see it really well. It's in a blue pen. Long's Puke. You hit record. You talk and you say, you know, I noticed it seemed like a lot of sell stops got elected in this area. And which means if what happens, if longs puke, less sellers above, we could turn around and rally. And whatever else you want to document verbally. And then after you do that, the box closes and a dot appears the color that you made it. If you made it orange, it's an orange dot. So you go back to click on it. It'll play back what you said. So put yourself in a position to understand why price moves, how other people's position is the path that you are now going to be on and stay on. And never get off that path. Never get off the path of figuring out what other people are doing and if they're loaded up the wrong way. Stay on that path and then put some sort of documentation down. This makes it easy as to why you think it was going to turn there. Even if it's after the fact, who cares? What could you have seen in real time in here to say this market was going to pop or to say that this market was going to turn around and come back off? And then you start to get into that epiphany moment that I had 21 years ago, of what makes you so special? You have to know why price moves. Here, you want me to bring this chart down? I'll show you on a live chart, just doing a verbal journal note. So if I click, anywhere I click on the chart, you see my cursor? If I click on the chart here, even after I seen it rally, if there's something you could have seen in real time, document it. You hold down control and you left click, and the box pops up. You type in a title, breakout, and you hit record. And you say, you know, I thought this market was going to break out based on we had some shorts that um, seemed like they got stuck. Some longs puked in here based on X, Y, Z. 
and we were poised for a breakout. And I actually seen it, and it seemed like a probability. You hit stop, you close the box, and there's the dot that appeared right here. If I hold control and click on this dot, here's how you play it. That's how you play it back. In fact, I could um, share sound. I'll play it back. You guys should be able to hear it. You guys hear that? No, you don't hear it. Okay, well, then it didn't work. The, the uh, sound didn't share. If you go to another dot, you click on it, you play it back. No, it's on a speaker over there. I'm not going to pull it so you guys can hear it. You get the point. Anywhere you have dots on your chart, you'd use this verbal journal for anything, obviously. If you miss a trade, if there's, if there's something bothering you, get it off your chest. And you use different colors. You have purple dots for every time you're mad. And then and, and you see how many purple dots you have. Miss trades. How many times you miss a trade and it aggravates you so much that you do something stupid next? Document it. Not by writing it down. You ain't going to go back and read notes. You certainly don't have those words that could scatter on a chart that's relevant to where you had that thought. And keep it short. I've worked with people that use this and they make five-minute journals. I'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. Keep it under a minute. All right? Keep it under a minute. Sometimes five seconds. But get it off your chest. And people have found some really creative ways to use it and to journal. It's just an efficient, effective way to actually journal. Everyone should journal. The problem is it's, it's really cumbersome to, to journal. It takes a lot of work when you're doing it the traditional ways of writing, writing. You got, you got stacks of no, notebooks that in 10 years you'll go back and read, and that's the first time you ever reviewed your notes. So, yeah, to change the colors, and someone's asking, and I'll go back through some questions. Real quick, if you click on it, you change the color like that and you put any color you want. It'll bring up the, the last color of the uh, note that you made. And that's it. So whatever color this is, whoever asked that question is the color of the dot will appear. See? And then it's got your mic. If you got different mics, it selects the mic you have. And you delete it from here also. So if you come in here, you want to delete that recording, you delete it here, it's gone. All right. The Donald says there's a problem with Zoom sharing the system sound. So that's why I didn't play, play back and I heard it through my speaker. But Ninja actually, with this verbal journal, they have excellent sound there's no fuzz or anything else i actually have recorded notes where i started singing the sound was so good my voice wasn't so good it was just i thought i'd sing i actually had i don't know it's not on this chart because this is the june contract i was showing this when i first developed it to my daughter and then i left the room and she she left a dot and I see a pink dot up here because I showed her how to use it. And she, she was younger. She won't admit to doing it, but I got the recording where she said something nice. And when I played it, it was kind of neat. But anyhow, verbal journal is using something efficient. And so this webinar was to find order flow moments, to start talking like you're really trying hard to be a detective at where other people are. Let me, let me uh, tell you guys what to do to get it. Then I'll go back and answer your questions. Based on your questions, I'll understand if you guys kind of get the point I'm trying to make. So you guys that know me, I also run the Edge Trading Group. And I have a, um, a room where these moments 
you'll see and you'll be able to record them. So those that get the verbal journal will get a free month into that room. All right. Go to verbaljournal.com, verbaljournaltrading.com. And once you get it, it's after you get it, I'll send you a discount code to get you a free month into this room over here. And this room over here is just going to, in real time, explain these moments when they happen. Then you could use your verbal journal to document it so that you could go back and play it and listen to either what I said or put it in your own words. All right, so that's step one. You get that coupon code not to buy it, but after you buy it. And then that's the month that you get as we go through it. But um, just, again, put yourself and always focus on, even if you don't take me up on this offer, what do you want to come away with? And what you want to come away with is now you're focused on the people on the other side of the table. You're actually placing bets against someone. They want something different th to happen. And when you get them all jammed up is your best opportunity for the price to go the other way. You don't want to be long with too many longs. and You don't want to be short with too many shorts. Verbal journal trading, not verbal journal, verbal journal trading.com. Now let's go back to some of these questions. I kept it. I don't like doing any webinars over half an hour. When people used to do hour webinars, they were crazy long. So let me go back and answer some questions that you guys had. There's a lot of them I see coming in. So let me open the chat and make sure I start at the top. And I got it. All right. Well, even higher than that. All right, some are just comments and some are questions. Let me make sure I'm at the top. Desmond, thank you. Now, someone asked about the slide, but knowing why being the boss. All I mean by that, my dad would say, if you know how, you have a job. If you know why, you'll be the boss. Most people get into trading and all they learn is how. They don't learn why. And the whole point of that slide was, the O was, why price moves? Know why it moves. Another question. That oh, was just a statement. Good. Aggressive buyers. And I'm not Desmond. Anthony Drager. Limit orders do equal neon. This is a good question because others... Might have this same question. Let me type it in. I mean, draw it up. Limit orders, look at my screen, do mean the same thing as resting orders. Yes, good question. Limit and resting mean the same thing. And then also you could use the word passive. All three words mean the same thing. Limit order, resting order, or passive could you know equate to a passive buyer. Limit buy. Resting by passive buyer. Now, order flow, someone says inside information is order flow. It is if you know why price moves and how people get stuck. You got to know not just orders. You got to know the intent of an order. You're not guessing their probabilities. There's no guarantees that you know that they got long. You know that they got short. You're trying to stack probabilities. Anybody that gives you words like guarantee or promises, they're trying to get you excited to buy something. Don't listen to them. You're trying to stack probabilities to give yourself a better chance to understand that, hey, that divorce couple, you had a better chance at price coming lower like that slide with the divorce couple, but maybe maybe they were stubborn. Maybe it was, they had three years to sell the house, right? There's no guarantee. It's just, hey, the probability if I have a divorce couple I could buy a house from or someone that's patient, probability is you're going to get a better price, lower price from the couple that and who's emotional. All 
And so question, Sean says, what happens to supply and demand? Too many longs, price go up. Actually, too many longs, price goes down. Because, and think this through. If there's a long, there's a seller attached to that long, isn't there? What happens after you get long? You put a sell order, don't you? So you're a seller. After you buy it, you're a seller. So if there's too many longs, there's too many sellers. And if there's too many sellers in the price of anything, it just has a better chance to go down. That's all. Does that make sense, John? Let me scroll down and look at some other questions. Uh, this was the moment I asked you guys what you traded. And if I happen to not answer a question, it's it's because I missed it, not because I ignore it. Uh, order flow. Is it leading or lagging? It depends on what you're using it for. Most stuff that's on a screen is lagging. Most stuff on the screen, guys, is, is mathematical formulas. Moving averages, stochastics, and Fibonacci. All this stuff is like, you know, I, I always joke about Fibonacci, that the only thing I like about Fibonacci is that he was Italian. And people laugh, and, and I'll say 618312, and someone asks me, but you know a lot about it for not using it. And you know why? Because I went down those rabbit holes there's nothing wrong with those things but you got to be able to read the real time to qualify those things and so what makes what would make order flow or anything you watch from lagging to leading is using it to determine and stack the probabilities of people getting too short or too long kenneth does that help with that question if anything is going to be a leading indicator it has to help you determine other people's positions. You know, the other thing that's a leading indicator and you could document it with verbal journal. Is there another market that's leading your market? That's also a, would be a leading indicator. That doesn't happen often, but when it's more volatile, there's like another market that when it does something, Sometimes, sometimes there's a time delay for you to jump and maybe qualify a bullish opinion and get long, right? There's that lead, lead lag. Doesn't happen often. Any. Generally, when it does happen, it's when the markets are, are a little bit more volatile. So when you're talking about leading, it's a market that's influencing the price of your market. It's important. Keep your eyes and ears open on relationships. And then the other thing that's, uh, that, that's very helpful in leading is the understanding of other people's position. Joshua, I think I answered the question by uh, with, with the promo and the verbal journal and coming to the room. You actually understanding why I'll make different like, uh, the, you know, long, I think longs are puking here. And if longs are puking here, we have a better chance at going up. Why? Less longs, less sellers, less sellers, easier chance to rally. That's all. Is there a better way, John asks, to trade the NASDAQ with order flow? There's a better way to trade everything with order flow. As long as you have a better chance at determining, John, again, stuck positions. The NASDAQ is a, is a real volatile, slippery market. Anybody who trades it knows exactly what I mean. Let me clear some of these uh, drawings. And so the... Uh, what, what you're looking for with a NASDAQ and a market that moves like the NASDAQ, the Russell too. Some of you guys i seen trade the Russell. The NASDAQ is a market because it slips. And, and don't kid yourself. It's five bucks a tick. Those $5 add up quick. The, the micro is a way to have some skin in the game. What's that? 50 cents a tick, I think. Some skin in the game without getting clobbered. But with the NASDAQ, to answer your question, you want to, when you read a chart, it's not just reading the order flow. You can look at a pattern from now on and try to determine who got shook out. So if, if the NASDAQ is doing this and going sideways, and you want to get long because you think it's going to go up to a target you have, you see a pattern where it tries to go lower and then shoots back up. Now, you can't wait till it shoots all the way up to your target because then you're too late. But you're looking for a shakeout. So when the NASDAQ, because it's such a volatile market, breaks out a lot, you see it's con congested in a range tries to go down, can't, jumps up. Why is this pattern conducive to seeing other people stuck and other people shook out? 
because the people who are long in this range, chances are put their sell stop below the range and got shook out. So they're no longer long. If they're not long, they no longer have a sell order up here. That's number one. Number two, momentum traders trying to get short as, as it breaks out bottom of here. They think it's going to go lower. So they play a breakout and they're short. Guess what? When you're short, you're now a buyer, aren't you? So if you get less sellers, because there's less longs, and you get more shorts, you create more buyers. And it's easier to go up to your target. So this is one head fake pattern that could show you that longs got shook out and shorts are saying, holy, you know what? They look like this. They got that dumb look on their face. They're not mad. They're, they look, they're just stuck and they're dumb. They're the buyers that make a rally a rally. And by the time you're long and get out, they look like this and they're beat up. So that's a pattern especially with markets that fly around like the NASDAQ and the Russell that you want to get used to. You want to be on the other side of shakeouts. That's a good question though. Kenneth asks if I'm a contrarian. No, not just a contrarian. No, I like to be on, if I identify a trend, I try to get on the same side of that trend. But even if you're a trend trader, anybody who's a good trend trader, First of all, when the chart looks like this, it's almost too late. You know that you know that saying, the trend is your friend. By the time you might see it, it's not your friend because it's over with. But if you identify that the market could trend and it's to the upside, you're still in a way a contrarian because good locations are pullbacks to hop on the trend. So the retracement back to your price that you're looking to qualify to get on the team for a rally are, are, you know, I don't want to make chart patterns look too perfect, but essentially, if you think the price is going to rally like that, you're looking to buy pullbacks. So you're not reaching and you're looking to find qualifying moments with who do you want to see shook out if you're trying to get long in an uptrend? Where do you want to see moments of longs puking? Well, I just gave you the answer. You want to see moments of longs puking when you're trying to get long and uptrend. So in a way, you're kind of sort of a contrarian, even if you're trying to play the upside. Does that make sense? Partly. I can't see your whole name because it's cut out. I think it's Theo. He asks, and I lost the question. Where is it? So am I looking for large quantities of buyers or sellers to be absorbed without price moving? In part, yes, but not just not just um, buying, but either large buy or sell orders and the tempo in which it gets rejected. I draw a box because that's how I show a big buyer, big seller, red and, and uh, green. But um, so if, if price is coming lower and a big seller jumps in and it just hangs here, it's not giving me great information. Price is coming lower and a big seller jumps in and it quickly jumps above where the big sell came in, big seller came in. I could assume that they're stuck shorts. That's just one way to read that a bounce might be coming and could qualify maybe a support area you got there. But there's also things we look at to see longs puking or getting stopped out. So longs getting stopped out is also important to try to pick a bottom or qualify support. You're not always picking a bottom when you qualify support. How many people you get into this business is very common to have support resistance and you should. People have different ways to get support resistance. The difference is qualifying them. So everybody's got, Tiffany, are we almost done? Is that what you're giving me the five minute mark? Yes, actually, okay. we're gone a little over time, but that's okay. I will give you, um, let's go ahead and do two more minutes. All right. I'm sorry. I thought it was still 4.15. Um, I'll wrap it up right now. Support resistance really quick. When you have resistance and you put an order at resistance when you're early in your career and the market goes up to it, you don't get filled and it goes lower. And you're like, man, I was right. I didn't make any money. So then you put it a little lower. And you still don't get filled. 
So the next time you maybe put it a little lower, you're trying to develop where to put it in the zone. Sometimes, most of the time when you're right, you don't get filled, but when you're wrong, you always get filled and it races right through you. So then you say, well, I got to have a better line. I got to have better resistance, better support. No, you got to have better ways to qualify. Where in that support are you going to fight for your spot to create better probabilities that make you so special going back to the epiphany? There's a lot of questions I'm not going to be able to get to. So if, if you don't mind, Tiffany, to put that email address I gave you, support at verbaljournaltrading.com. For those watching this on a recording and don't get it, verbal support at verbaljournaltrading.com. And do me a favor, though. If I didn't answer your question, there's a lot of them I didn't. Email me. We'll get to them. Um, let's just see one more question. When someone says journaling is hard enough and rare, that's why you got to keep journaling easy so you could review it or else it's useless. They're saved as WAV files, so you'll always have them. Someone asks how you go back. At the very least, they're on your PC as a WAV file. So they popped in verbaljournaltrading.com. You guys got the link. Supportiverbaljournaltrading.com is my email address. Didn't get to your questions. Don't worry, just send me an email. And uh, that's well, let me ask, answer this one question because these are a lot of people that have this problem. Tiffany Desmond asks, what could they use journaling for without a solid system? Short documentation of what you're thinking. So then you could strip randomness out when you're right. Did you, did you find something that's not random or were you just, and, and, and feel lucky, feel like a good guess, but start to journal the things you're looking at and the opinions you have in short clips. So you can go back and say, am I on to something? Very simple. Am I on to something? How can I find the turn? What am I seeing here? Now you put that strategy or system together great question and that's what journaling is really helpful for for people not only have something that they that they're trading so they miss less but for those trying to develop a lack of randomness means to qualify your opinion to go back and listen so when you're right is it just a good guess or are you onto something are you seeing other people's positions in a sense of a feel and a good read for the market. So have a good holiday weekend. Happy Easter to everyone who uh, celebrates it. Have a nice uh, long weekend. Markets are, are closed tomorrow, but uh, it's a pleasure doing this, Tiffany. You guys do a great job with these webinars. And um, so thank you again. Perfect. And I would like to start off by giving a special thank you to Anthony of Verbal Journal for a great presentation today. Ninja Trader Ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly vendor events as a value added service for our clients. If you find value in these events, we hope you will attend them on a regular basis. Additionally, we would like to remind you the information provided in this was a verbal journal and not of Ninja Traders. All information was for educational pur purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Again, we appreciate the time you spend with us. Enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us at an Intruder Ecosystem, and thank you again so much, Anthony.